Hi, I'm Paul Beckwith with the University of Ottawa, a laboratory for paleoclimatology. Please uh, have a look at my videos on my YouTube channel and also go to my website, paulbeckwith.net, to uh, see lots of other information and videos that I've posted and blogs, etc. Um, so, what I'm talking about here is this is surface air temperature of the globe, degrees Celsius relative to the 1880 to 1920 average in 2065 with a 0.6 meter sea level rise in 2080 if there was a 1.7 meter sea level rise and in 2096 with a 5 meter sea level rise so the top um, this is 2.24 average global temperature rise 2.58 2.84 it shows you the distribution of temperatures so three to five degrees is the red and above that, the brown is five degrees and warmer. So you notice that the Arctic is warming a lot more and also Antarctic than the rest of the planet. Parts of, on the land over Africa and Asia are also warming very quickly in these scenarios, more than other regions. Now what you see, now this does not, so this does not take into account how the melting of the ice putting cold water into the oceans affects these global temperatures. So if we assume a 10 year doubling period for ice melt from Greenland, that's shown here and that's added into the data. Um, so what we see is the, the, the cooling here and cooling here and cooling here as melt water from Greenland comes off into the Atlantic Ocean. So the, that would lower the global average temperature. It wouldn't rise as much because of this a lot of that energy would go into melting the ice rather than um, and putting that colder water into the ocean rather than heating the planet. So you can see how the temperature is moderated. That doesn't account for Antarctic melting. So now let's take a 10 year doubling period just from Antarctica alone. And this is the type of thing that you get here. So actually right here, the global average temperature rise, it knocks off the uh, temperature rise here because you've got, but you get tremendous amounts of melt causing five meters of sea level rise. Now this is what happens in the, in the more, in what we expect would happen. We would get ice melt in both hemispheres. The doubling period of 10 years would occur in each of the hemispheres. So we'd get melting from Greenland and Antarctica, and that would knock the temperature down a bit. Um, and what you can see here, here is what you see it for 2080 with a 1.7 meter sea level rise. So the temperature is low, is moderated. And here by 2096, with a five meter sea level rise with massive melt and 10 year doubling period from both Greenland and Antarctica, you would actually have a slight temperature drop relative to this time period because of all that ice that you've melted and water that goes into the, o into the ocean that cools things. So this is, uh, this is how climate change will proceed most likely. Okay, the temperature rises that we see now, the very, very rapid temperature rises will eventually hit the ice sheets in a significant and very rapid fashion. And they're starting to do that. And then that will cause a redistribution of temperature on the planet. Um, and of course, wherever there's um, extremes of temperature, wherever there's cold regions next to warm regions, there's very high winds very large uh, pressure changes, very high winds, and you can get uh, large superstorms resulting. This is showing global surface air temperature um, in, in some different models. This is with the purple line is ice melt in the North Atlantic, just in the North Atlantic. The green line is in the Southern Ocean. The red is ice melt in both hemispheres. And we have a five year doubling time here um, and a 20 year doubling time here. And this will be a 10 year doubling time. So with about a seven year, like I say, keep in mind we're at about a seven right now. Um, but let's take, you know, this case, for example, what you can see is the temperature rise that's occurring will actually be chopped a bit, will be chopped down significantly by the melting if we, are start, if we get enough melting to cause large sea level rise. Um, and you can see, so you can see this, also the global energy imbalance. Um, you can see that there's, a lar there's large imbalances of energy in these different scenarios. And the dips here are large, um, 
Uh, th those are, this is uh, Mount Pinatubo. This is Aguada, um, El, Chichen, El Chichen in Mexico. These are different volcanoes that put up ash and cause the cooling of the planet temporarily for a few years. If the volcanoes are large enough to put, uh, to, to put uh, sulfur dioxide up into the um, stratosphere. Okay, so these are changes in 2080 relative to the 1880 to 1920 average in terms of the energy balance in the planet under one of the IPCC scenarios. Um, and again, it's similar format to the previous um, grid of maps. This is ice melt in North Atlantic from Greenland. So ice melt from Greenland, ice melt from Antarctica and the combination of them both. And it shows the energy balance in terms of the forcings in watts per square meter relative in 2080 relative to this average time period. This is cloud cover. So what you can see is large, this is a percentage increase in cloud cover. Um, so you can see, you know, there'll be lots of extra cloud cover over these particular regions, uh, this particular region here. Um, and there's other features that you can see. And this is net energy going into the surface. It says into the ground, but into the surface. So there's lots of, as the, if we're melting off Greenland ice, then there's lots of energy going to heat up that water. Um, and in, this, in the Southern Ocean, we get the same sort of thing here. And ice melt in both hemispheres, the most likely scenario um, would be, uh, you know, extra energy going in to those regions to heat that ice up to, to melt it. Um, in, you know, as a, as a rough ballpark, I would expect the, the, the cascading feedback effect so, in other words, if we start getting a lot of uh, melt from Greenland due to cascading and calving and, what, uh, and you know, speed up of glacier movement, that will raise sea level, that will destabilize Antarctica, and that will then cause a rise, you know, a, a, an acceleration of melt from Antarctica. So, if we get a seven meter sea level rise by 2070, I would expect about three and a half meters from Antarctica and three and a half from Greenland, and the part from Antarctica would be, uh, you know, there'd be probably most of it, well, I'd say over half would be from the West Antarctic ice shelf, and I think there'd be significant amounts from East Antarctic, which I'll talk about some papers discussing that in a, in a minute. Um, in terms of Antarctica, um, if you look at longitude, um, this is, um, most of it, the melt is from, if, if you raise the temperature over Antarctica from minus 40 to minus 35, you don't get more melt on the surface, right? It's still, it's still frozen solid. We do get some loss of mass from Antarctica from the strong catabatic winds, which can blow snow off the continent or onto the ice, onto the, um, ice offshore. Um, or you can get sublimation, very high winds, that, you know, you get catabatic winds slowing down and you get adiabatic heating and you can get a lot of uh, sublimation. So the frozen ice then evaporates into the vapor, carrying it off. There's some mass loss, but most of it is from calving on the coastlines or basal melt. So water is undercutting underneath, melting the ice from below. This is showing you the, as a function of latitude around the coastline of Antarctica, um, how much calving there is and how much basal melt there's been based on data from 2013. These are 15 degree bins. Um, so you can see it's highest in some regions here. I'm assuming these regions here will be on the West Antarctic ice shelf, probably the, the Antarctic uh, Peninsula. And uh, let's move on here. Um, again, I showed a similar chart. This is the global surface air temperature, how it would be um, in the IPC scenario. Um, but with ice melt and one meter of sea level rise, you would follow a lower curve. And if there's ice melt enough to give you 3.8 meters of sea level rise, then you would see a drop like this. So don't just assume that the temperatures will just continue to go up because they will be modulated 
by all that extra ice melting causing sea level rise to occur. And this is a global energy imbalance um, under the same conditions as we see up here. So this is showing surface air temperature on the planet relative to the 1880 to 1920 average again in 2055 to 2060 with modified forcings. If there was a sea level rise of one meter, then we would see global average temperature rising 1.19 degrees C. And there would be, you know, there's this cold area here and this cold area here due to the extra ice melt. We're still getting lots of polar warming, lots of Arctic temperature amplification, but not so much near this region here. And we're also seeing the continents warming more than the oceans. So what we see is the most of the models that you see showing global temperature rise are not assuming any significant sea level rise. Well, they're assuming very small amounts. Um, and uh, therefore, they don't, they don't include these sort of effects, this modulation of, of temperature. And they're just incorrect, I think. So this is showing a nice cartoon showing we've got Antarctic here, we've got Greenland here, we've got a lot of prograde beds in Greenland. So it gets shallower as you go inland and you get calving. And as you get more and more calving, you're taking the cork off the bottle so the glaciers on land move faster. So and you get accelerating loss of ice. On Antarctica, we have a lot of these retrograde beds. So as the ice melts back, it's uh, not supported. It loses the grounding line points. And large, once it passes a grounding line, you can get a massive calving back down to the previous grounding line. And what we're seeing is this is the expanding sea ice here, and these are the currents. You get the North Atlantic deep water formed, and you also get the Antarctica bottom water coming around. And what we're seeing is as the water freshens up here, we're getting less of this. So we're getting more of the North Atlantic deep water, which is warmer. It's going in, and it's undercutting the ice more quickly. So this is a very strong feedback, which is accelerating melt from Antarctica. So. Um, just a couple quick points here. Um, this is a recent uh, post from uh, Robert Scribbler. Um, so this warm water that's going underneath Antarctica's largest glacier, one of its largest glaciers in East Antarctica, um, the Totem Glacier, is equivalent to 30 Amazon rivers. So what we can see here is this is an image of the melting edge of the Totten Glacier. And what you can see, this glacier, if it was to melt out, that would raise sea level by 12 feet or more. Um, and there's a big canyon running below sea level, six miles wide. It's basically a weak point for this glacier. And this new study has shown huge amounts of warm water are flowing into this canyon en entrance, undercutting the Todd and Glacier. Here it is right here. So a big part of East Antarctic um, glaciers is liable to uh, raised sea level significantly, 12 feet. Um, and so this is fairly new um, information showing that, um, you know, melt rates are going to be a lot higher than expected. So there's lots of, you know, th this is a fairly new, like I say, this is recent stuff in the last uh, year. And, you know, the more we understand about glaciers and melt, the worse the picture becomes. Of course, Pine Island Glacier, I've talked about in the past. It's the fastest melting glacier in Antarctica. About 25% of Antarctic ice loss is from there. Um, and it's on the West Antarctic ice shelf. So it's also rapidly um, melting, causing um, rapid sea level rise. And in Greenland, the glacier to watch is the, um, I can't pronounce the name properly, it's the Jacobshein. Um, where are we here? It's the uh, Jacob Chavin Isbray Glacier. I massacred that name again. Um, it's the world's one of the world's fastest melting, and large chunks are coming apart from that. In fact, you can see satellite image from you know over two week period, and you can see big movement and stuff. There's an iceberg here. This is the calving front. This is the glacier here. So this is an area also to watch. 
and um, the, sea, the seabed in this area is scoured out.